In this video, we're going to derive the bivariate normal and the uh, conditional bivariate normal. So here we have two normally distributed variables. So z is a normal mean zero variance one. Z2 is a, is the, a, a standard normal random variable. They're independent. We're going to let x equal mu plus sigma times z1. So what this gives us, this variable, x is normally distributed because it's a linear combination of normal variables. But it has a mean of mu1 and it has a variance of sigma squared. So x is normal mu1 sigma1 squared. Now let's create y2 in a unique fashion where it's mu2 plus sigma2 rho, which is the correlation between that we want between x and y, z1 and then times square root of 1 rho squared, sigma squared, z squared. So let's look at the expected value. Um, we know it's going to be normal because it's a linear combination of normal random variables. So we take it in a constant, you just get a constant, you pull the constants out, expected value of z1 plus, and these, the expected value of z1 and 2 are 0, so those drop out, leaving just mu squared. Now let's look at the variance. So the variance of a constant is 0, and then when you take the variance of this, those come out squared. You get this variance, square, square. Well, the variance of a standard normal is 1. So you get this plus this. Well, the minus p squared and p squared, sigma 2 squared, cancel out, leaving just one of those, which is, is uh, sigma 2 squared. So y is normal mu2 sigma squared. Okay, so those... Now let's look at the relationship between x and y. If we look at the covariance of x and y, then we fill in what x and y is equal to, and then we look at the covariance of this times that, that times that, that times that, this, you know, we take every possible combination, but not quite because since this is a constant, it drops out. So you can you can forget about this and and this, and it just and this is equal to that. Now we look at the combination of this and that plus this and this. <clears throat> That's what we do here. But we know that z1 and z2 are independent. So in a norm, so in a normal uh, setting, so if our variables are normally distributed, this is zero. So the covariance drops out, and we're left with just this. And then when you have the covariance, you can take the uh, constants out front. And, and if, if these were matrices, you have to take that out to the back and this to the front. But they're constant, so we can take them all out to the front. And then the covariance of Z1 and Z1 is just the variance of Z1, which is 1. So it leaves this. Remember, this is the covariance. So the correlation is the covariance divided by the square root of the variances. Which then is this, and we get... Uh, row. So now let's look, find the actual density of a, of a bivariate normal. If we start out with z1 and z2, they're independent, so we can take separate them into the product. And since these are just standard normal random variables, this is what they equal. And let's create um, a transformation here. X is this, and Y is this, as we defined before. And then we have to back solve for z1 and z2. This one's easy. This one's a little more complicated. And then if we solve for z1 here, then we put that in here and then solve. Now we have to take the Jacobian of it, the absolute value of the Jacobian, end up with this, and the, we take the determinant and we get this. And 
since the this is positive, that's positive, or you know, greater than zero, and and rho squared is one or less, zero to one, so this is positive, so it's a positive variable. Now we uh, the density of x and y, then we plug in, you know, that we found for z1 here, and here's z2 into our standard normal distributions times absolute value of the Jacobian. So then this this piece here is this piece. You plug it in for the z squared, then you plug this in for the z2 squared times the Jacobian. Now we start simplifying. So this we pull out front with this and since and this that goes out front. And since these are exponentials, we can combine them, just make it one e and then subtract it. And that's what we do here. So this piece is here. Now I want so we have two terms here. And I want to factor out a uh, minus 1 over 2 times 1 minus rho squared. Factor it out of both terms. But this term doesn't have the 1 minus rho squared. So we're going to have to multiply it. And that's what we do in this term. Oh, we do more than this term. So here, so this y squared comes down these two terms come down to here. Now notice that this has a plus rho squared x minus mu 1 over sigma 1 squared. But when we factored out this from both, we had to multiply this piece times 1 minus rho squared. So the minus rho squared in this, and this is a plus rho squared, they'll cancel out. And then, then we're left with just one of those terms. That's how we get to this step and the constant terms just are this and then that's the density that's given that's it. that's it so now let's look at the condition conditional distribution so here we have x given y and the formula for that is the joint divided by the marginal so let's plug that in here is this distribution is what we just found and that's just uh, y, which is a normal random variable, mu2 sigma2 two squared. And here's the density for that. Now we start simplifying. This piece, you know, can be canceled with uh, half of that or the square root of that. Sigma2 squared can cancel with that. And then this comes up as a positive when you raise it, so it's going to be e to the plus one half and then we also when we when we bring it up then we factor out a one half and then one over one row squared and that's what we get here so um, remember this is the that's one number and then we bring this up oh, to the back so we still get this we get the middle piece we get the uh, y squared, but, and then we take this up, and since it goes to a positive, when we factor out a negative, it becomes negative, and then we also have to multiply it times this. Um, well, now we can simplify again, that we see this, the negative 1 times this, and that they will cancel, and then that leaves a, a plus rho squared times this. Well, we have this squared minus 2 rho times this plus this squared. That can be factored into this. So this minus rho squared that squared becomes this. And everything else just transfers down. Now, what I want to do next is I want to factor out a uh, uh, sigma 1. Remember this is is squared so if we factor if we just pull this out here 
and um, actually if we pull it out of both of them, a sigma 1, it means we multiply by sigma 1 here and pull out a sigma 1, but then to take it out of this squared, we have to square it. That's what we get here. And then we have a, a sigma 1 squared here. Um, and the reason we do that is to make this piece now this is sigma 1 squared times 1 minus rho squared so this piece and this piece are the same so this is the square root of what we have here and this, this is just simply x minus some constant and it's constant because we conditioned on y so and so, it, and so this ends up looking just like a normal distribution with this the mean and, and that the variance and that's what we get so this is distributed as normal with this mean and variance this and then that's the density for the uh, conditional normal distribution so hope you enjoyed it uh, the next video I'm going to show how to integrate the bivariate normal and and uh, and show that it equals one I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.